Today's episode is a rare breed. It's instructional rather than scientific or theoretical. What we're going to talk about is how to sprout broccoli seeds. I'll give you tips informed not just by my personal experience of growing sprouts, but also vetted by the consummate expert of all things chemo protection, Dr. Jed Fahey. But first, why broccoli sprouts? Broccoli sprouts contain up to 100 times more glucoraphanin, the precursor to sulforaphane, than mature broccoli. Sulforaphane is an isothiocyanate compound that is the most potent, naturally occurring dietary activator of NRF2, a protein that binds to special sites called antioxidant response elements that each of us have in our DNA, ultimately controlling more than 200 genes, many of which have antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties and have the ability to inactivate potentially harmful compounds we are exposed to on a daily basis. Whether you're interested in getting more dietary sulforaphane without buying some kind of supplement or just producing healthy food for less money than you'd spend at the store, this video is for you. We're going to cover the supplies you need like sprouting jars, preparation, in particular ways to sterilize seeds, all of the steps involved including soaking, rinsing, how long you should sprout, and how you should store them, the basics. Let's get to it. Start by taking a look at your seeds and throwing out any rocks or other weird stuff. Fill your jar with water plus something to kill any bacteria on the seeds. Apple cider vinegar plus soap is what we show here, but we talk about other options in the guide. Put in a hefty amount of seeds, three to seven tablespoons, and stir. Let the bacteria killing solution do its work by allowing the seeds to sit for about 10 minutes. Rinse the seeds really well. We rinse about 10 times and then fill your jar with fresh water. Let the seeds sit at room temperature for about eight hours. After eight hours, drain off all the water and let them stand at an angle. Rinse twice a day for a few days, taking care to drain off all the extra water every time. Watch them grow. I harvest the seeds on the second or third day to get the most sulforaphane and to reduce the potential for bacterial growth. Now that you have sprouts, what should you do with them? You can put them in the refrigerator and eat them over the next few days. Alternatively, you can freeze them. Here's a clip with Dr. Jed Fahey who discusses a little bit about freezing sprouts. Well, if you eat fresh sprouts, they're fine. If you, oh, you mentioned that you freeze broccoli I sprouts. wanted to ask okay, you okay. about that. So when you freeze them, as this is interesting. You freeze them, you take them out of the freezer, if you put them in, a blender and make a smoothie right away, then the myrosinase is going to act in that in that liquid, mm -hmm. right? Right. And so you're going to be getting plenty of sulforaphane, I think. If you let those sprouts thaw out, there's a bunch of juice that's going to run out. They're going to look like a slimy mess, right? Mm -hmm. By the time you see that juice and either pour it off or pour it in your container, probably most of the myrosinase activity has occurred and sulforaphane has probably started to bind to proteins and macromolecules in that vegetable mess. Um, and because what happens is when you freeze the plant tissue, when you thaw the plant tissue, I guess, um, you've broken, broken down all the cell, many of the cells. So the lignin, the structure on the outside of the plant cells is still there, but the cells are trashed. Oh, is that why freezing increases sulfur and it's just breaking? Well, ice it? crystals are forming. And, yeah, and it, okay. it, it releases the enzyme, allows the enzyme and the substrate to come into contact, form sulforaphane. Um, it's, so it's probably okay, but you have to capture all the juice or the easiest thing is just throw it in the blender right away, That's which what is I probably do. what you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there you have it. Sprouts are pretty easy to make, and it can definitely be fun. Big special thanks to Dr. Jed Fahey for helping us put together a really fantastic guide that is informed by so much great knowledge and experience working with these compounds through his work at the Chemo Protection Center. If you want to get all these steps in one clean written guide, say no more. We've put together a beautifully illustrated sprouting guide with a Q&A from the isothiocyanate man himself, Dr. Jed Fahey. You can get that right now at foundmyfitness.com forward slash sprouting or on the member dashboard if you're a Found My Fitness Premium member. I'll post a link in the description of this video to that along with any supplies we mentioned today. 
Finally, if you like this video, click like, subscribe, and maybe let us know what you think in the comments. This isn't our typical flavor of video, so I'm always interested to hear if it appeals to you so that we can decide whether or not to do more just like this one. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time.